While Dr. Kroll could not be here today, I am grateful that uh, the chairman of our board, Harold Berry, uh, was able to get away from his uh, work at Grace University in Omaha and come express our appreciation to Elizabeth Elliott for these 13 years of uh, radio ministry for women. So, Harold, please come and uh, express our gratitude. Forty-five years ago this past January, I was a senior in Bible College at Northwestern in Minneapolis, and I can remember one day as if it were just yesterday. They announced over KTIS, as we were getting ready to go into chapel, that communication had been lost with the five missionaries that were seeking to make contact with the Alka Indians. One of the members of the team was Roger Udarian, who was a graduate of Northwestern. In fact, the yearbook when I graduated was dedicated to him. And then the news came shortly that uh, those five were in heaven. And I remember, too, how spiritually motivated I was by the book Through Gates of Splendor. Elizabeth, thank you for the heart you've poured into retelling the story that has motivated so many to give their lives to Jesus Christ and foreign missions. But let's fast forward about 25 years to another Bible college in Omaha, Nebraska. I was on the faculty. One of our students, Jan Anderson, could not stop talking about how she had been to Urbana and how Elizabeth Elliott had so impressed her. And Jan was a radio communications major, and her desire, she talked much about it later as I visited with her, that Elizabeth needed to be on the radio to give her an even wider outreach for her message. And then to know some of those connected with the Gateway to Joy also, uh, Linda Myers, that I had a part in her wedding, and I'm thankful for that. Lisa Berry, I have not met before, but people keep asking me, is that your daughter? <laughs> uh, what influence they think the chairman of the board has. Uh, no, I spell my name wrong to be related to Lisa. But Elizabeth, we just want to thank you so much. And this became a fruition and Jan's dream. And, and when you launched Gateway to Joy in October of 1988, so in behalf of Dr. Kroll and the Back to the Bible Board of Trustees, I want to thank you for the way you've so faithfully served the Lord in your commitment to Gateway to Joy. And now if you would come forward, Elizabeth. I would like to present you with this book of memories of letters by radio station managers, staff, and friends of Gateway to Joy. And I ask you to make a few comments if you'd like to. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I was going to start with the vision of Jan Anderson. You've already heard that. I can't, there's no way that I can thank her for what she had, had done for me. My husband knows that I don't usually cry, but I've just been so blessed. And so there was Jan, and of course there was Lisa, behind the scenes most of the time. And of course, Linda, who came to my home month after month, and all the others who have been behind the scenes, Alma, and my dear friends, the oldest people that I know in this audience, <laughs> <laughs> Mardell and Malcolm. And Mardell was the first outsider who went in with me to live with the Alka Indians. She was just there for a very short time but I'll never forget that. And my brother Tom will never forget our trip and the canoe down the river. <laughs> we had some wonderful times. I didn't really know Malcolm until these two finally got together. <laughs> I mean, it was years and years that everybody said, when in the world are Malcolm and Mardell ever gonna get married? Well, finally the little airplane came into the area where I was living with the Alcas. Marge Saint was there. She got out of the plane, she said, Mardell is going to marry Malcolm. <laughs> we all heaved a huge sigh of relief. 
but I wish I knew all the names and it's been a great blessing just to sit here and realize what a huge group this is. I had no idea there were so many people behind it. So I do thank you. And I want to just end with a passage from scripture that just seems to be exactly what I need to hear myself. Isaiah 46, verse 4. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you, and I will carry you. I will sustain you, and I will rescue you. To whom will you compare me or count me equal? To whom will you liken me that we may be compared? Some pour out gold from their bags and weigh out silver in their scales. They hire, gold, hire a goldsmith to make it into a god, and they bow down and worship it. They lift it to their shoulders and carry it. They set it up in its place, and there it stands. From that spot, it cannot move. Though one cries out to it, it does not answer. It cannot save him. Remember this. Fix it in mind. Take it in heart, you rebels. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what it is, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. From the east I summon a bird of prey, from a far off land a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that will I bring about. What I have planned, that will I do. All I can say is, to God be the glory. <laughs>